Good morning, everyone. Um, happy Monday. Um, a few of you might have seen a bit of this presentation uh, before, but I, uh, I took some recent slides that came out of the mine plan that got released today um, to just op update it a little bit. And then I was obviously late and ran over here to do this. So. Um, just for anyone that's new, um, uh, floor spar is a critical mineral. Uh, it's used in the um, uh, manufacture of aluminum, steel, hydrofluoric acid, fluorine, um, cement. Uh, it's used in the glass industry. It's, it's quite a ubiquitous industrial mineral. Um, I, I don't believe, yeah, you can't recover it from, say, um, uh, when it's already been used, so it's got to be continuously mined out. Um, there are no substitutes for the metallurgical side of it at all, or um, for the aluminium or the, uh, the steel side of it. Um, you, you can't, you, you need it to make the hydrofluoric acid, there's no substitutes for it. It's also um, uh, a difficult mineral to source. For instance, there's not very many countries that actually produce it. Um, I think there's about six or seven big ones, um, and obviously we're going to be uh, seventh or eighth. Um, country to produce it. Uh, also, uh, the good part about it is as well that um, uh, we have no domestic competition. Um, we're the only, only permitted and producing floor spa mine in the United States. Um, so yeah, that's what we got. Just as a little bit of a breakdown, I just mentioned very quickly there, um, there's, uh, there's two main products and we'll be producing both of those. Um, the Met Spa, which is the, the lower grade product, um, that's used principally in uh, steel manufacturing. Um, we'll be producing uh, some for industry, hopefully around the sort of July, August time. Uh, we've already bought a plant, a metallurgical lumps plant from, um, uh, from one of our um, industry partners. And so that's on its way now. Um, and that'll be producing metallurgical lumps for the steel industry. Um, that, the good part about that is too, is that um, the manufacture of those is very cheap and um, the retail price, there's a very good margin on that as well. Um, the acid spa will be producing that as well. Um, that's a higher grade material, usually defined as anything over 97% uh, CAF2. CAF2 is um, floor spa. Uh, that goes into more high industry end applications like um, hydrofluoric acid, fluorine. Um, it's, it's used mostly in the chemical industry um, we, we've designed the plant for that and the um, RFQs have gone out for that as well. <clears throat> that should be coming later in the year. Uh, it'll take a bit of time just to optimize and get that in place. Um, so all the waste product will get out of the lumps plant, we'll just stockpile. And as soon as the acid spa operation is up and running, we'll just throw everything into that um, acid spa facility. So. Just as a bit of a background, um, as you can see on that map there, the, the black um, lines outline our claims, our claim areas across the whole mountain. And so from north to south, you've got about, um, uh, it's about nine kilometers and it's about, um, you're looking about five kilometers uh, or four, three or four kilometers along. Um, I've got about 2000 acres of uh, prime, um, uh, location where we've identified well over a hundred pipes at the surface and, and those are the ones just at the surface. Um, part of the um, part of the way we, we set up the company is um, when we first started uh, we identified the mine which is in the north um, there was already the permitted area and it turned out the rest of the whole mountain area the whole spore mountain area was producing was um, had high grade floor spore as well but it had um, all the claims had lapsed so we went and staked the entire mountain range um, and what was interesting about it, after we, we'd done that, we found that um, we assayed a lot of the grades and we were finding 70%, 80%. Um, it turned out to be one of the highest grade deposits in the world. And so obviously we were quite pleased about that. So the plan obviously would be to start mining in the north. And then um, we've got the, at the very, very south, um, if you can see my mouse, that's the Bell Hill claims. That is, that's the likely site for the second mine site um, that we're going to start exploration on next month um, but that exploration is going to run alongside development work on the lost sheep property uh, to get that ready for mining uh, later this year um, also what's really nice about this is that we've got good roads all the way up here all paved roads all the way to the uh, all the way to down um, 
Delta, which is the nearest town to us. Um, a little bit about um, uh, the first mining site we're going to be doing. So I mentioned um, the uh, Lost Sheep mine site. So we, we drilled those out and we, we delineated these large ore bodies just beneath surface. Um, both of these are open at depth as well. So these are only probably the um, a minimum estimation of how much tonnage there is there. Um, we also took a histogram of sort of the grades we were getting. Um, these sort of uh, lower grades, this was where the surrounding wall obviously got mixed in with um, some of the floor spar. But really, you're looking at sort of an average of um, 65 to 75% feed grade that will be going into our plant. So it's, it's very rare that you get something this high in terms of grade. Um, usually for a floor spar operation, 15% um, is, is, is kind of the standard uh, for a large scale operation. Um, so yeah, we're very fortunate on that. And even like we've even got some stuff that's almost um, acid spar grade straight out of the ground. So that's pretty, pretty lucky. Um, I mentioned uh, a little bit just before about um, uh, an inventory that we put together for, for pipes across the whole area. So we um, these were just visually confirmed ones where we went across the area and we just visually confirmed pipes at surface. And historically, these have, um, pipes have been about 100,000 tons of floor spar. But even if you, um, you halve all of these, then you're looking at decades worth of production coming out of, uh, out of the ground. And um, the other part is as well is that obviously these originate from underground. So um, this will just be an indication. Um, uh, there's, there's almost certainly a lot more underground which we haven't identified. However, um, we're starting a geophysics uh, operation um, next week, and that'll and we're hoping that if that's successful and that can pick up some of the resistivity density differences between the floor spar and the surrounding rock, then um, we'll be able to identify a lot more of the floor spar on the ground and add to our inventory a lot more. So the mining engineers have been looking at um, how to go about mining this, and um, now we've completed our mine plan, and, and that went out this week. Um, there, there could be a little bit of open pit um, mining going on, but um, uh, the most prudent way to go about this is to um, construct adits that intersect the ore bodies uh, at lower depths, and you'd, you'd run a sort of a drilling, a drill and blasting operation where um, you would just drill and blast from the top downwards. Uh, and you'd run the ore through an ore chute into the adit, and then you'd excavate it out from there. Uh, and so those designs are now in place, and we're ready to start uh, installing the adits. And this, this gives you a bit of an idea of um, uh, the product that we'll be getting out of the ground. And, and this stuff here is sort of 70% raw, unprocessed um, product. You could actually send this straight to the steel mills, and they would take this, um, which is a good indication of the high grade that it is. Um, so the uh, PE engineering have um, uh, finished up the mine plan and they put together a rough um, capex and opex of what we're looking at um, to progress. So I quickly wanted to throw this in here, which I lifted out of their report this morning. <clears throat> um, if you take into account uh, leasing arrangements as well, uh, we're only looking at about five million, uh, five and a half million US dollars um, total requirement to get going on the capex side of things. Um, so for a mining operation, it's a relatively small investment. I mean, you don't need bigger capital investments for things like smelters and big plants uh, and things like that. Um, very, very, very small investment for a mining operation. Um, the OPEX, which obviously I think is high, but um, you know, I'm willing to uh, defer to uh, safety and um, there's a margin of 20% on the, this as well. Um, just for things going wrong. But for instance, um, uh, the production per ton, the, the engineers, um, the independent engineers came up with an estimate of about $146 a ton. Uh, currently, we, um, we found that uh, the acid, uh, this, sorry, this is for acid spar, to produce acid spar, which is currently retailing in Utah at over $600 a ton. So it gives you an idea of the sort of margin that we're looking at on each ton to produce this stuff. Um, on the metallurgy side of things, we've become very expert over the past, I'd say, eight months, um, where we've been working with SGS. 
um, and we've uh, to take our raw feed and create like a high grade a high grade product. Um, so these are four uh, representative examples of um, uh, acid spa which we produced recently. We we can consistently hit the ninety seven percent very easily. Um, very low impurities as well. Uh, it should also note that um, uh, not just our reports, but um, the, uh, the the mine plan, uh, the independent mine plan found that we produce no deleterious elements, no deleterious materials or waste or toxic uh, toxins. Um, so it's a very clean product. Um, and in fact, the waste we produce can all go back into the ground because it's all inert. Um, so based on uh, a lot of our metallurgical work, um, we constructed um, the, the flow sheet, which is um, gone off to, uh, which is going off to industry um, for tendering processes and design work, and uh, and then that'll be obviously installed uh, immediately after the um, uh, immediately after the metal, uh, the floor spa lumps plant is in um, is in production. The recoveries we've we've got really high up now. So when we produce um, high grade uh, Met Spa, we got looking at 92% recoveries. Um, we even got good enough where we just tried to make a 100% pure product, and we got pretty close, um, just because uh, we were experimenting with um, different techniques for improving on the metallurgy. But we're all, we're always improving on that. But we've got very expert at it now. Uh, just a little bit about the infrastructure. Um, I haven't noted it on this slide a little bit, but we've got rail access and the rail access runs through our property. Um, we've got the warehouses set up and we have industrial land. But what's even better is that um, uh, you can't see it here, but Lindell, which is this town here, uh, UP, Union Pacific, um, have just agreed to lease us 60 acres of land uh, on this property here, which also has access, direct access to rail. Um, and so that gives us an enormous amount of extra industrial land to expand onto. So the, the plan obviously is to get going on um, the lost sheep, get that mining, open up the Bell Hill claims, um, and then um, expand into our 60 acres of industrial land. Um, so this is, the, this is the dirt road as well. You can see just running alongside Spore Mountain, but this leads straight to a paved road and 95% of the road we've got <coughs> is paved. So the um, just to be just to get going with the with the product, um, the intention is obviously to produce as much acid spar as possible once the acid spar plant is up and running. Um, we're looking we're, we're baselining at about five thousand tons of product a month to begin with. Um, the the intention after the uh, the Bell Hill claims open up is to obviously increase that as much as we can, and uh, exploration is going to continuously run. So we're going to continuously add to the inventory, and if it looks possible to open up uh, tertiary mines um, alongside Bell Hill and Lost Sheep, we're going to do that too. Uh, this is a bit of an old slide because this is actually lower than it was too, and part of the reason why the, the price has spiked is because, um, say, co uh, countries like China um, that used to be net e uh, exporters have become net importers, and a lot of the reason for that is they mined out a lot of their high grade in the uh, 80s and 90s, um, and now they struggle to um, find the high grade that they need for their metallurgical industries. Um, and so that's obviously cre creates a big spike in price um, for the commodities. So anyway, that's, uh, that's everything. So, cool. so uh, yeah, we can take uh, questions or anything. Um, All right. Yeah, I'll just let you manage it. Okay. Um, Maybe just read it. Uh, oh, sorry. So this is from Graham Bonkowski. Uh, when do you expect the acid spa processing facility to start production? Understanding it takes five months to build. So uh, looking at it reasonably for the acid spa plant, um, our, um, RFPs have gone out. Say the tendering process takes a couple of months, then you're looking at construction and delivery. Uh, you'd be looking at the installation of the plant near in sort of Q4 this year. Um, and there might be an optimization period uh, following that too. Um, the good part is that uh, we're already mining by that point and um, uh, all, wa all waste product from the lumps plant is going to be sitting in the new uh, industrial land from UP. And as soon as that's up and running, we can throw everything into the, um, 
uh, into the acid spa plant, but certainly it'll be on site by the end of this year. Um, does anybody have any questions for James? Um, if, if not, what I can do is I'll bring up Zim 2's uh, position in Aries, just, just in case anybody, well, it looks like somebody raised their hand. Yeah, Charlie, did you? Uh, yeah. Yes, please. Just, uh, I'm wondering that with the price and the market looking so good now in, in uh, the States, are you aware of, are there going to be a lot of other mines opening up? Uh, maybe ones that had closed before because the market was poor? Um, well, we have looked at it, but we can't, I mean, we even talked to the USGS about this, but there are no mines um, that are scheduled to come online. There's none that are permitted either. Um, in fact, what's even ended up happening is that they've, um, they've tried to recover uh, floor spa from um, uh, sulfide operations um, because they're so short of it. And that, and that's, uh, that gives you an indication of um, how difficult it is to source this stuff within the United States at the moment. So, but no, we haven't seen anything. In fact, um, uh, we've been approached by a few other people uh, in the United States um, with prospects, but there's no technical information on them. There's no development work. We would be, if we partner with any of these groups, it would be um, developing uh, greenfield sites. Yeah, good, thank you. No worries. Last presentation, did you mention something about permits not being allowed or something in the States? Um, oh, no, no, that was to do with the drilling. Oh, but the drill. the, yeah, the Biden uh, administration brought in a ban against uh, new drilling. Oh, okay. um, But that didn't doesn't affect us. Actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, interesting for new companies, they'd have a tough time kind of. Yeah, I, I think that basically what happened was that they they wanted to appease a lot of their voter base with the oil and gas industry. So they banned new drilling for oil and gas, but the rule ended up hitting mining companies. And I think that was just a mistake. Yeah. I just think it was a mistake because, yeah. you know, if you don't, if you can't drill, you can't mine. And so yeah. then you don't, you lose all of your resource industry almost straight away. So I think, for instance, we've actually been given um, permission to start drilling um, next month already. So clearly if that rule is in place, all the government agencies are just ignoring it. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so actually, if you if you have a junior mining company, I wouldn't even worry about it because um, all of our permits were granted, and so they're just ignoring the government. So. Yeah. Any other questions? Feel free to just unmute yourself and ask them, or type them in the chat or anything. Um, you know, while we wait here, what I can tell you is uh, what Zim Two is looking like. I'll just share a screen quick. Um, and this is on our website here, zim2.com under investors snapshot investment portfolio. It's a new kind of uh, initiative we've done just to show what our holdings are at. And for, for, uh, for Aries, we have 1.25 million shares, um, <clears throat> makes up about 6% of our holdings. So, uh, we're obviously very excited about Aries. So just a quick shot. I'll send the link to that. If anybody's interested, you can see the rest of our holdings mm -hmm. as well. You have some warrants as well, I think. We do have some warrants, yes. Yeah. So let's take a look at those, actually. Uh, we, I think we have quite a few. Um, we should, I think you should at least have 600,000 warrants. Yeah, we have 625,000 warrants as well um, till June 2022. So yeah. take a look here. So yeah, if you want to see that for yourself, I just sent it in the chat. Um, Otherwise, does anybody else have any questions? Uh, we're recording this, so we'll be, be sure to post it after the fact. And if you have, oh, looks, I think, yeah, Netherton here, I'll uh, ask you to unmute if you got a question there. Um, yeah, James, it seems like uh, the original plan was to um, deal with open pit um, mining. And um, that if I'm correct from what I'd heard for, uh, before, and so this seems like a, a change in uh, in direction on the mine. Am, am I correct in that? Um, partly. Um, so there's still there's still some stuff open at face on the lost sheep and the purple pit, and so we can go after open pit mining though, on those. Um, but it was the mine plan that just got released today, and the the diagram you saw came from um, the independent mining engineers, and they and they said you can go open pit 
on the stuff near surface, but then you still leave the issue of everything beneath that. And so it would actually make more, it would be a better cost saving if you just ignored the, um, because you're gonna have to do some um, underground anyway, if you just ignored the open pit and you didn't do any stripping um, and you just blasted it from the top down anyway. Um, so it was, it's sort of their cost estimation, but to be honest, we're gonna have a bit of a look at it because it, I think once we get the mining engineer, sorry, the general manager on site, um, it would make a lot more sense for expediency just to take that stuff out of the top anyway. Um, so, so the mining engineers have designed um, for the underground system, but I, I think in terms of, uh, yeah, for quickness of getting started, we're still gonna, still gonna strip out the top of the tops of the pipe that are exposed. I don't think it makes any sense just to uh, leave those sitting there while we're building the adits. Um, also, in um, I didn't get the name of the little town, Lin Linwood or Lindale or something. Oh, so yeah, De we've got an industrial state in Delta, but Lindell, which is just up the road, um, it's it's a really small town. I think it's got like a hundred people there. But UP, for instance, they have um, I think it's uh, about eighty acres of land just by the rail, and they've they've agreed to lease us about sixty acres of those um, uh, those acres, and so. Um, that's going to be uh, the site for the acid spa facility, and that gives us a huge amount of expansion room. So. Are there, uh, and it's got uh, access to. Where you go. Uh, is there siding uh, in place there already? Railroad sidings. Yeah, that that's why because um, we had a bit of an issue in that we couldn't expand our current industrial estate, and we uh, we went to the city of Delta, um, and they tried to help us, but the the issue was that they couldn't site us anywhere near rail, and um, so we went directly to UP. Um, and we spoke to UP about it, um, and they were the ones who actually found us this this area. And the side rail um, comes immediately off into Lindell, and it's not being used currently. So they're they're pleased um, because they get to obviously get some more business and lease that as well. So they're they're pretty happy. So. Are there uh, water resources in Lindell? Yeah, we because it's um, we're just next to. Uh, um, uh, a smaller industry plus housing as well. So we've got all the utilities, so gas, water, electricity, everything like that. There might need to be a bit of an upgrade on in terms of capacity, um, but it's easier to upgrade capacity than it is to reinstall all that stuff. The, the, the underground infrastructure is there. We just need to um, increase it for us. Wow, that's, uh, that sounds like a great uh, setup there. It's, it's it's pretty good actually. We've we've been on a bit of a roll recently. So yeah. no kidding. <laughs> yeah.